to see today's photo, go to mtforchrist.org or follow me, M.T. Clark, on Facebook or Twitter. Good morning. Today's photo of the sun shining bright over the dockside diner while its rays transform a fountain into a blazing cross-like flower and create a light pathway on the surface of Echo Lake comes to us from yours truly as I took a moment yesterday to capture this scene and uh, bask in the sunshine after two days of rain while on vacation on Planet Disney World <laughs> since Friday. While it may not be a whole new world, it is a different reality down here, and while I have enjoyed the fun Disney World has to offer and even had a real moment of appreciation for how Walt Disney's vision has positively impacted generations, I am struck with melancholy when I realize that the world broken by sin can't be saved by just our imaginations or our hopes and dreams or even our best efforts. And that, as wonderful as this place is in some aspects, it is quite terrible, perhaps even sinister in others. Beyond the materialism and selling of potent potables, merch, toys, and thrills for circumstantial happiness, the concepts and symbols that hold the spirit of Antichrist are at times hard to ignore. For example, dragons are a symbol of the enemy, and there are lots here. But instead of rallying against the evil today, I will focus on the good and realize that this place is, was created for people to come to have some fun and express their love for one another by sharing their experiences together and remembering more innocent times from their childhoods. And when I see the love that parents have for their children and families have for each other, it gives me hope that they may already know the love of the Lord, or one day could. The evil and the harsh realities of the world can be escaped from, but they can be overcome through the love of God that is found when we put our faith in Jesus. So, with that hope, we seek to draw closer to the Lord in this season that prepares us for the celebration uh, of Christ's resurrection, Lent, and the sixth day, it's the sixth day of Lent, and so we continue my personal walkthrough of Gracia Grindel's 40-day journey with Martin Luther to observe and celebrate the Lenten season. And this walkthrough, uh, Grindel's uh, devotional, is our hope that we will get to know Martin Luther a little better as we seek to draw closer to the Lord on our journey to Resurrection Sunday or Easter. And so we continue and uh, with Journey Day 6. And Martin Luther writes, You are to have no other gods. What is this? Answer, we are to fear, love, and trust God above all things. Um, a god is the term for that to which we are to look for all good and which we are to find refuge in all need. Therefore, to have a God is nothing else than to trust and believe in that one with your whole heart. As I have often said, it is the trust and faith of the heart alone that make both God and an idol. If your faith and trust are right, then your God is the true one. Conversely, where your trust is false and wrong, there you do not have the true God. For these two belong together, faith in God. Anything on which your heart relies and depends, I say, that is really your God. And that was from Martin Luther. And today's biblical wisdom is drawn from Exodus 20, 1 through 5, which says, Then God spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourselves an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. And our, our devotional prompts us to take some time for silent meditation. Uh, so at this point, you should pause the podcast or stop reading and sit quietly for 60 seconds or a minute, 5 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, or however long you feel comfortable with and have time for. Focus on your breath and the calm stillness in the present moment that is always available to us in God's creation. Meditate on Martin Luther's comments for the day and the content of today's biblical wisdom. 
So now that you're done with your meditation, we move on to the questions to ponder in our study. And the first one is, how is it possible that our faith and trust can make, both, quote unquote, make both God and an idol? I don't like the phrasing, make both God and an idol, <laughs> when it is removed from it the overall context of Luther's statement because nothing we do makes God. He is self-existent and completely holy, set apart and different. But as Luther points out in his previous statements, uh, to have a God is nothing else than to trust and believe in that one with your whole heart. And what we put our faith in, whether the one true God revealed in the pages of the Bible or some other created concept or thing, becomes our God. So, faith in Yahweh, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit makes the one true God of the Bible our God. While faith in Buddha, money, other ourselves, our families, our job, or any other false religion makes those things our God, small g. Or, more accurately, our idol. While our faith makes something our personal God, big G, or God, slash right, a little g, it doesn't make God who he is. And the next question is, what are some of the things, idols, are, uh, things, idols our culture encourages us to place our faith and trust in? Uh, as I included in my list above, our culture encourages us to put our faith in ourselves, our families, our jobs, our money, by Western society, tends to distrust or deny the supernatural, uh, so self-sufficiency is the biggest idol in my culture here in the United States. Governments, political parties, individual philosophies, institutions, and corporations are a close second. Then the next question is, we are instructed to both fear and love God. In practical terms, what do you think it means to fear God or to love God? To fear God is to respect him and his wisdom and power. And quite frankly, to really fear the judgment he will bring to those who are not safe in Christ. To love him is to know him, and the fact that he is good, righteous, just, and holy, and that beyond those attributes is his love for us. To fear and to love God is to know him, to trust him, and to obey and follow him. Then our devotion moves on to the psalm fragment for today, which comes from Psalm 115, uh, and it's verses 4 through 8, and the Word of God says, Their idols are silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths, but do not speak, eyes, but do not see. They have ears, but do not hear, noses, but do not smell. They have hands, but do not feel, feet, but do, do not walk. They make no sound in their throats. Those who make them are like them. So are all who trust in them. Obviously, that's a discourse on idols. Uh, and then we move on to the journal reflections, um, which the first one says, God wants to be in relationship with us. Describe in your journal how you experience your relationship with God at this time. I experience my relationship uh, with God as my constant companion through life. I blog, pray, and read his word each day to stay in his presence. I pray to talk to him. I try to obey what his word instructs us to do and try to encourage others to seek him. I spend my days walking and talking to God because I have known his love and experienced his presence. He never leaves us, but you have to spend time with him to know he is there. My relationship with God defines who I am. And if, uh, the, our devotional prompts us to write about how the fear and love of God work themselves out in your daily life. The fear of the Lord causes me uh, to want to do what is right. The love of the Lord gives me the motivation to continue to do it. Only his love would change a rebel like me, and because he first loved me and has demonstrated and revealed his truth and love for me, I now try to abide in his presence every day. And the final journal prompting uh, states, it has been said that the human heart is a factory of idols. 
and your journal describe any idols that have been manufactured in your own heart's factory? What kind of worship do they demand of you? What would you need to do to be free of these idols? My self-sufficiency is still a big idol, although some self-sufficiency is unavoidable because the world demands we work and support ourselves, I will often not seek help because I think I can do things by myself. Uh, but God often humbles me to reveal how inadequate I am in myself, and I now, <laughs> I now more readily will admit when I can't do something and need help. Uh, food is still another uh, an idol I as well, as a part of me still wrongly associates food with comfort or pleasure, and has demonstrated my lack of self-control over it during this vacation. Um, that has demanded that idol has demanded me to worship it by you know partaking in vast quantities of sugar laden snacks um, during this trip. Um, lots of desserts here at Disney. Uh, it's in the plan, you know. It's paid for. Anyway, we're going to pay for it later. Um, I will be in full repentance mode when I get no return back to normal. Thanks be to God. And finally, our devotional prompts us to pray. Prayers for the life of faith today say says, pray for yourself, your family, and your friends that they will put their faith wholly in the one true God and put away all their idols. So let's do it. Lord, I pray that I, my family, and friends will all put our faith in you, the one true and only God, and put away all our idols. In Jesus' name, amen. And finally, the prayer for today is, Lord, cast out to these idols in my heart that captivate me and draw me from you. Give me the faith to put all my trust in you alone. Amen. And today's Bible verse comes to us from the quick scripture reference for uh, for counseling by John G. Crowis. This morning's meditation verse comes from the section on communication, gossip, and lying. Um, and today's verse is Proverbs 15.4. New American Standard Bible, um, it says, A soothing tongue is a tree of life, but perversion in it causes, uh, crushes the spirit. Today's verse is the second of two passages of Scripture that fall under that 15th point of our Counseling Reference Guides resource section on communication, gossip, and lying. That 15th point is, A word aptly spoken and a wise rebuke can be very helpful to others. Today's verse reminds us that life and death lie in the power of the tongue by giving us the analogy of a soothing tongue being a tree of life, whereas a perverse tongue being one that crushes the spirit. According to MacArthur's commentary, perverse means here means to wound or break, thus to destroy one's morale. And that's how negative words crush the spirit. They take away our hope. So speak soothing words of truth that will guide others to submit to God and to have the hope of life eternal that comes through faith in Christ. As always, I invite all to go to mtforchrist.org where I always share insights from prominent Christian theologians and counselors to assist my brothers and sisters in Christ with their walk. Today we continue sharing from According to Your Word, Morning and Evening Through the New Testament by Stephen F. Alford. And I, um, you know, they're basically a collection of devotional journals from 1940 and 41. And in those journals, uh, Stephen Alford prompts people to read a chapter of scripture in the morning and in the evening. And for the, today's entry, he prompts us to read Mark 11 and shares from it Mark 11, verse 22, which states, have faith in God. And then Stephen Alford writes, the writer to the Hebrews says, Without faith it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Hebrews 11.6 It follows then that without this faith it is impossible to earn the divine attestation. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Matthew 3.17 or well done, good and faithful ser servant, Matthew 25, 21. Faith, in the sense of the above text, is not an attribute of God, 
but his essential nature. Therefore, only those who are partaker of God's divine nature are possessors of it. Moreover, it is increased as Christ, who is God's nature, is formed in me. And then finally, offered praise, Lord, increase my faith. I believe, help my unbelief. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, yeah, we need faith. A lot of faith, faith focus here today. Um, but rightly put, our faith in God is true faith, you know. Otherwise, you have false faith because you believe in something that can't save you. Um, you know, we, we respect not only God um, for his saving power, but it's creative power. He's created the universe and everything that's in it. And he, he stands alone above and beyond everything else. And when we put our faith in one of the created things, either um, uh, something that God created or something that man created, um, we fall short. And uh, we perish as God, God's word reveals. And so, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So we have to have faith in Him, specifically through the person of Jesus Christ, uh, to save us. Um, so we have to we have to have faith <laughs> and put put our faith in the right things. And as much as I am having fun here at Disney, I'm not putting my faith in this to make. Disney to make me happy. Um, my faith, my happiness, my joy comes from the Lord. And um, that's not going to go away. And it's not going to kick me out of here. <laughs> um, after after my money runs out. Um, so, so it's it's a great practice to, uh, to do this Bible study in the morning here at Disney. It really keeps me grounded and I'm very happy uh, for my daily spiritual practice um, you know that's why I recommend it that's why I do the blog and the show people that a life of faith is possible no matter what you're going through or where you are and that you should take time to spend in relationship with the Lord every day um, because he'll give you the truth and knowledge and power to overcome uh, the things of this world and uh, that's why we do what we do because the Lord's blessed us to discover this and uh it's our mission in life to share it um, because people need it. They trust in the things of this world or themselves and they all fall short of the glory of God and lead to destruction. So let's uh, let's trust trust the Lord and follow him. And let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for another day in your kingdom. Thank you for a relative lack of distractions this morning as we, uh, as we seek to give you glory and uh, seek to follow you, Lord. Uh, Lord, we just pray for you to um, bless anyone who's listening or reading today's message. We pray for you to uh, come alongside us in our prayer request um, and to guide us today in the way we should go. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.